Poem of the Week number 29, Sing with the Wind by Mary Gilmore, 1865 to 1962. First published on the 14th of June, 2022. Sing with the Wind. Vast is the chasm, and in the deep below, silence has fallen asleep beneath its tree. Yet we, above the stark declivity, still hear the hush of winds we do not know. For in the vague that covers all, the slow trail of the air, like floating hair flung free, draws with a moving earth, which far stars see, as some titanic head swayed to and fro. O pygmy man, so like a thistle seed blown hitherward from distant space, O note in an eternal wind, O little float on time's scarce entered sea, art thou the crown of all immensity? Nay, wouldst thou read thy pleas? Or this dark brink, look down, look down. Here are perhaps the first inklings of a modern Australian poetic tradition. The linguistic archaism is certainly there, the form is a very traditional one, and the descriptions of the landscape colonially European, but there is nonetheless a hint of something that's starting to burst through the seams. Look at the uncanny nature of certain images, or take in the overhanging existential trepidation of the poem. While they might be redolent of the work of some European romantics, this poem really does distinguish itself from the simplistic bush ballading that otherwise characterises 19th century verse in Australia. The likes of Kenneth Slessor might well have been the ones to kick the modernist door open, but a special mention has to be made for Dame Mary Gilmore, who first dared to peek out and leave it ajar. Form. Sonnet. Written in iambic pentameter. Analysis. The poet is looking out over a vast landscape. Although silence reigns, she imagines that she can hear the sound of a great and distant wind. With this, the perspective in the poem zooms out from the immensity of the natural world to the immensity of outer space, as earth is viewed from the stars as a, quote, titanic head swayed to and fro. The focus in the second stanza shifts to man and his insignificance in the face of all this. The contrast between him and the magnitude of creation is repeated with three images. The thistle seed blown through space, the note in the eternal wind, and the float on the sea of time. The question is posed whether or not he is the crown of creation. Want an answer? Look down that precipice. <laughs>